memory map on motion of a body. Motion of a body is the change in position of the body with respect to time. There are three important types of motion of a body. The first type is called as one dimensional motion. The example for one dimensional motion is the motion of a car on a straight road. In one dimensional motion, only the x coordinate or the y coordinate of the body will change with respect to time. Therefore, it is called as one dimensional motion. We can also take the example of a train moving on a straight track, track as one dimensional motion. Now, after one dimensional motion, we have two dimensional motion. This is the second type of motion, two dimensional motion. In two dimensional motion, as the name itself indicates, both x and y coordinate of the body will be changing with respect to time. And a simple example for two dimensional motion is a body in circular motion. You take a stone and tie it to a string and start rotating it. Now the stone will describe two dimensional motion or circular motion. The third type of motion is three dimensional motion which occurs in space. In three dimensional motion, all the coordinates, three dimensional coordinates of the body, x coordinate, y coordinate and z coordinate will change with respect to time. A mosquito flying in a room or a butterfly flying in a garden or a bird flying in a space are all the examples of three dimensional motions. So basically, remember in motion of a body, the types of motion of a body, we have one dimensional, two dimensional and three dimensional. Now, each, these, each of these is an individual question for one mark. So, students are supposed to remember the definition of these motions with examples. Now, motion of a body is described by six physical characteristics or quantities. The first one is the path length. What is path length? It is the actual distance between the initial and final position of the body during the motion. Uh, there is a point A here, another point B. Now, a body travels like this from A to B. Now, that is the total distance covered by the body is the path length and it is a scalar quantity. Now, the second important physical quantity of motion of a body is displacement. Displacement is the shortest distance between two points. Say I have a point A here and B here. Now the shortest distance is the straight line connecting them straight across. Now this is displacement. This is A, this is B and if I reach from A to B, now this is path length. Now this is A, this is B. Now I take the straight route, then that is displacement. Now this has got a sense of direction because I have to take the shortest route. I have to travel with a sense of direction. Therefore, it is a vector quantity. Displacement is a vector quantity. Now let's go to the next important physical quantity of motion. The motion of a body is described with the help of speed. Speed is a scalar quantity in SI unit. It is measured in meters per second. Speed is the ratio of path length to the time taken. It is denoted by x by t, where x represents the path length of the body and t is the time taken. Now, let's understand the different types of speed. The first type of speed is uniform speed. Uniform speed, as the name itself indicates, if a body covers equal distances in equal intervals of time. What is the condition for uniform speed? Body should cover an equal distance in equal interval of time. For example, if a body covers 30 kilometers in 45 minutes, in the next 45 minutes, the body should cover the same 30 kilometers. It should not go for 25 or 35 like that. So here the body is covering equal distance in equal intervals of time. Then the speed of the body is said to be uniform. Now opposite of uniform speed is the variable speed. If a body covers different distances, in equal intervals of time. Say in 45 minutes it covered 60 kilometers, 
the next 45 minutes it's covering 52 kilometers the next 45 minutes it's covering 60 kilo i mean uh, 58 kilometers some different values like that now the speed is said to be variable speed now the average speed the average speed is defined as the ratio of the total path length traveled by the body and the total time taken to the total time taken so it is uh, v average is total path ratio of total path length to the total time the average speed tells us how fast a body is moving but it does not tell us anything about the speed at a particular instant of time that's called as instantaneous speed so the fourth type of speed is instantaneous speed as the name itself indicates what is instantaneous speed of a body the speed of a body at any instant of time supposing a body traveled for 30 minutes what was the speed of the body when the time was 27 minutes 34 seconds to get this instantaneous speed we use a formula this formula is from calculus limit delta x by delta t as delta t tends to zero now this limit is nothing but dx by dt now this is represented as dx by dt so remember what is dx by dt dx by dt is the rate of change of path length okay now the next physical quantity of motion is velocity velocity is the rate of change of displacement so how can you define velocity ratio of displacement to time in the numerator you have displacement in the denominator we have time so it is rate of change of displacement and it is a vector quantity since displacement is a vector quantity what are the types of uh, velocity the velocity is mainly divided the different types of velocities the first one is the uniform velocity uniform velocity is if a body covers equal displacements in equal intervals of time while defining uniform speed we said body covers equal distance in equal intervals of time here we should say equal displacement in equal intervals of time so that's the difference between uniform velocity and uniform speed if a body covers equal distances in equal intervals of time then its velocity is said to be uniform the variable velocity is if a body covers unequal displacements in equal inter inter intervals of time then it is variable velocity the third type of velocity is the average velocity v average is total displacement of the body over total time taken so how is average velocity defined as the ratio of total displacement to total time taken again if you want to know the value of uh, velocity at any instant then you should look for instantaneous velocity what is instantaneous velocity instantaneous velocity is the velocity of a body at any instant of time it is given as limit delta x by delta t as delta t tends to zero or this ratio is denoted by dx by dt here x denotes the displacement so that's about the velocity now another important aspect of uh, motion is acceleration acceleration is velocity divided by time that is rate of change of velocity is called acceleration now again in acceleration we have different types of acceleration the first one is uniform acceleration if a, bo a body is said to have uniform acceleration if its velocity changes by equal amounts in equal intervals of time while defining uh, uniform acceleration we say that velocity changes by equal amounts in equal intervals of time then the body is said to have uniform acceleration the other type of acceleration is the variable acceleration which is just opposite to the definition of uniform acceleration that is in variable acceleration the body will be having different velocities and time taken is to, uh, to cover the same distance it consumes the same time or you can say that uh, variable acceleration or changing acceleration or non-uniform acceleration body will be having different accelerations for particular equal intervals of time now average acceleration is change in velocity ratio of change in velocity to total time taken 
Now, acceleration is given by another formula, V minus U by T, where V is the final velocity, U is the initial velocity, T is the time. So, remember, acceleration is final velocity minus initial velocity over time. And we have instantaneous acceleration, that is the acceleration of the body at any instant of time. It is given by the calculus expression, limit delta V by delta T as delta T tends to zero or instantaneous acceleration is dv by dt. Here dv is, is the change in velocity and denominator dt represents that it is rate of change of velocity at any particular instant of time. Since we are coming to particular instant, we give the limit as delta t tends to zero. Okay. Now, the motion of a body is also governed by the different types of force that is being acted. The body may be acted with different types of forces, maybe air resistance, wind resistance, frictional forces. These are also factors that come to regulate the motion of a body. Now, one more thing I want to explain. There are, uh, in motion of a body, we have uniform motion. In uniform motion, the value of acceleration is zero. For example, now just imagine that you are riding your uh, cycle or motorbike on a straight road and you are traveling at a constant speed of 60 kilometers. Since you are traveling at a constant speed, you don't change the accelerator of the motorbike. You fix the acceleration to the constant position. So what is the value of the acceleration? Since acceleration is not changing, acceleration is zero. So whenever a body performs, undergoes uniform motion, what is the value of acceleration? Zero. Now let's also see when is acceleration coming to picture. During uniform motion, there is no acceleration or acceleration is zero. Now, you want to turn the motorbike. If you want to turn the motorbike, you have to slow down. That means you have to change its velocity. So what you will do now, you will reduce the accelerator. So now acceleration comes into picture. Now you change the speed, therefore, it is not uniform motion because you are changing the speed and traveling. So it is non-uniform motion. Now here, acceleration is not equal to zero. It has some value. Again, if there is a road hump, you will have to slow down the vehicle. So that, that means if you want to reduce the speed, acceleration comes into picture or velocity changes, acceleration comes into picture. Now you want to take a turn. That means the direction of motion is also changing. Then also you have to slow down the acceleration. Again, acceleration comes into picture. So remember, a body moving or whenever there is a motion of a body, we have uniform motion and non-uniform motion. While a body is performing uniform motion, the value of acceleration is zero. But whenever body performs non-uniform motion, acceleration is not zero. The body has some value for acceleration. Now, when do you have non-uniform motion? If you want to reduce the speed or change in velocity, the body gets acceleration. Change in direction, the body gets acceleration. So here, I have illustrated the entire concept of motion in straight line with the help of a memory map. Now, this map will surely help you to revise this lesson within uh, a short time of uh, 15 minutes or so. So keep listening to this memory map and as you listen to this for three to four times, every aspects of motion of a body will be made remembered. Your brain acquires all the knowledge and you remember the whole thing. Wish you good luck.